Hi, I'm Dan. You probably know the piece, uh, however, on a completely different instrument. This was the beginning of the uh, second movement of Brahms' violin concerto, um, concerto that I just very recently completed, completed my arrangement. It took me six years, and uh, for several reasons, I embarked on a project like that. My source of inspiration was a joint one. I was inspired by Bach and Beethoven, who both uh, arranged their violin concertos as piano concertos. And uh, one should know that Brahms' violin concerto had its roots in both friendship and practicality. Brahms wrote it for his dear and close friend, Josef Joachim. And uh, this particular violin concerto was the first instrumental concerto I've ever heard even before any piano concertos. <laughs> About a year and a half ago, I heard Dayan warming up in his dressing room playing the Brahms Violin Concerto, and I was so shocked and astounded that uh, I asked him what was he doing, and he said he'd been working on a transcription of the Brahms Violin Concerto. I was so excited by this idea because, for one thing, what he was playing sounded fantastic and as if it had been written for the piano, and also just the very uh, notion of a transcription is such a important part of a great tradition, Beethoven's own transcription of his violin concerto, the Bach transcriptions of his violin concertos for the keyboard. It's, uh, it's a, uh, almost a kind of recomposition that Dayan has created with this version of the Brahms Violin Concerto, and it and it's, uh, actually provides quite wonderful new perspective on the piece. Of course, there's this eternal question, is one allowed to do um, something like this? Um, knowing that Brahms lived in a time where arrangements and transcriptions were more than allowed, um, welcomed with every, um, not only productive, but also reproductive artist, um, I think uh, the answer is yes, and that Brahms himself would definitely not have anything against this idea. I think musically, some of the decision making is different as appropriate to the possibilities of the instrument. As Dayan was saying, the, the violin can do certain things and the piano can do certain other things. But apart from that, and sometimes the orchestra can play out a bit more, 
than with the violin, just in terms of balance issues. But apart from that, I think the orchestra's experience of the piece is very much still the Brahms violin concerto. As we've been playing so much new music and commissioning, this orchestra is tremendously flexible and very interested and open, and they really contribute to the process of, of creation. And in many ways, this is uh, the world premiere of Brahms' third piano concerto. So it's been, it's been great how they've participated in, in making the adjustments that are there to be made um, to support uh, Dayan's playing of the, of the piece and his invention of the piece because it's not just his performance actually, but it's his, the, the myriad decisions he had to make about how to flesh out that one violin line into truly pianistic writing. And um, I certainly do hope that um, from now on one can enjoy this wonderful music in this arrangement, just as violinists were enjoying it for the past 130 years.